the bar where everybody knows your name may have closed for the last time. But don't despair. One Cheers regular has something to get off his chest in a moment. It's like this. I made a clean break with my past life, throwing over the bar stools of Boston for a fresh start here in Seattle. But it seems my search for a new life has offered up a set of its own problems. The living father. Hey, you're gonna have to run an extension cord over here so I can plug in the vibrating bar. His dog, Eddie. And to cap it all, the home care worker is sidekick. You're a florist. Frasier, starting next Wednesday at 10 on 4. From all of us at Frasier, have a joyous holiday season. Hey baby, I hear the blues are calling Tossed salads and scrambled eggs Quite stylish And maybe I seem a bit confused Yeah, maybe, but I got you pegged <laughs> But I don't know what to do with those tossed salads and scrambled eggs Happy Sunday, everybody And welcome back to Sitcom All Ye Faithful Christmas pa I'm not going to sing the whole thing. It's Sunday, it's day three, and uh, I am here to talk more Christmas sitcom episodes. Today, I'm talking about season three, episode nine of Frasier. You know, the spinoff as a concept is, is a pretty interesting idea. You, you find a character that you really, that you, is beloved from a, a hit show and you give them their own show at some point. Maybe it's during the show that you're watching, you know, a Joni or a Chachi, or it's after the show that was originally, you know, the character was originally featured on like maybe a Saul Goodman um, or you'll get a characters, you know, like think about, I think about um, the happy days universe and the spinoffs that came from that. I mean, you got Mork and Mindy, you got Laverne and Shirley. You got um, Joni Loves Chachi, of course. There was another one. I think it was called like Baker's Beauties or something like that, where it was like it was a very like weirdly connected. I feel like Al Del Vecchio was on it, or he played a different version, but the same actor played a different character. I don't know exactly. The point being is the spinoff is a novel concept because. You already have a built-in fan base for a show, but sometimes it, it doesn't work, and sometimes it does. When you think of the character Frasier, for a lot of people, when they think Frasier, the first thing they're going to think of is the show Frasier. Really, it's he, for, for a certain age, everyone thinks Cheers first. And that's natural. And I feel most people probably feel Cheers first. But at a certain point, the character of Frasier went on and re-kind of 
reestablished himself, re re um, invigorated himself. Like I, I can't. There's a there's a word I'm looking for. It starts with re, and I cannot think of it. It's he. It was just like a new interpretation of a character, very you know, very similar to the Cheers character, but it was like a rebirth. Come put him in a different setting, which you get a lot. Put him with characters that you don't quite know, uh, but he knows they're in his world, and boom, hilarity ensues. And it doesn't always work that way. And but in this case, and you know, think about this also. Laverne and Shirley they were on one episode. Mork was on one episode, uh, but Frasier was a major part of Cheers for years. I remember you didn't like him at first because he was with uh, Diane. Then later you learned to love him. He was like a rival of Sam, I feel like early on, but then you le- you just fall in love with him. And uh, then you see this guy's going off to do his own show. I wonder what it's, how it's going to be. And, you know, nothing will top cheers, but Frasier was a humongous hit, very successful show. And it took me this many years to finally revisit the Frasier character, because if you are a loyal listener of uh, sitcom All You Faithful, which I'm sure maybe a couple of you are, I did Cheers on the first year. And I'm thinking, is this the first time that I've done a spinoff featuring the character that I've already done? Because, yes, I did. I've done the Vernon Shirley and I've done Happy Days, but I didn't. They weren't featured on the episodes I did. Uh, and I think. I'm trying to think, was Edna Garrett in the episode of Different Strokes? Because she definitely was in the episode of Facts of Life that I did. So that counts. Yeah, Facts of Life is a Different Strokes spinoff. It's weird. It doesn't make sense. But it, it worked because they wanted the actor, obviously. In this, in this world, it just, like, they took this concept. They could have been a failure. But the character and a great actor in Kelsey Grammer. And they surrounded him with, I mean, it couldn't have been a more perfect cast. When I'm watching this episode today, and I'm, a, I used to watch Frasier, you know, fairly regularly, but uh, uh, I haven't watched it in a long time. And now they've rebooted it again. There's a 2023 version of Frasier that we were hearing about for years. It's his son has grown. Nobody else from the cast, I think, is on it. I don't think Niall shows up. Um, but it's on Paramount Plus, and I'm like, part of me just, just because of Kelsey Grammer, part of me wants to at least watch one episode. I haven't done that yet. Maybe I should have before I, I started talking to you today, but I didn't. Um, but when I think of the, I don't know how that cast is going to be. It's weird because I'm looking at that Frasier. I go, well, those aren't the people that uh, you know you you love seeing Frasier with. But it's the same thing when this version of Frasier came out. People are like, who are these people? He's got a brother all of a sudden. He's got a dad. But they cast this and, and put this, this thing together perfectly. Frasier and Niles together, it like they couldn't have done a more perfect job of kind of having a Frasier and a, a Frasier doppelganger in David Hyde Pierce. I mean, ridiculously perfect. And then at the same time, you get John Mahoney to be the dad and completely the opposite. He is the, you know, he's the guy who would have really fit in at Cheers. He's the, the blue collar, you know, uh, curmudgeon not really curmudgeon but just, you know, just a regular dude. And uh, he ends up, Frazier takes care of him. He lives with him. They have a live-in maid. And Frazier's now a radio doctor. Everyone knows the concept. I don't know how it is on the new show. I don't know what they do there. But everyone knows the concept of Frasier by now. And in this episode, we're in the third season already. So everyone's already established. We already know, like, in the original Cheers, they like doing this. Um, Norm had Vera, I think was his name, her name. The wife that you never saw her face. And in Frasier, Niles has Maris, the wife you never saw, never heard from. In this episode, it seems like they're on a bit of a break. Uh, and now he's like, I think we're getting back together. But it turns out that Maris canceled his credit cards, canceled his, his phone, his, his old flip phone, canceled his checking account, which comes into play in this episode. Uh, so he's kind of, you know, down the dumps about that. Frazier is really excited because Frederick's coming in. We don't see, um, uh, I can't believe, Lilith. We don't see Lilith uh, at all in this episode. But she's, that's another thing with this Frazier version 
or with the original spinoff, is you got a lot of the cast, the originals, coming and, and seeing him. You know, I remember Sam, Woody, I think maybe Norm and Cliff. Uh, but I remember people coming to visit Frazier. So um, what was I talking about? Oh, but he had, so Niles and has Frederick coming. But that's where I was going from. His mom wasn't there. So Niles has Frederick come in, uh, and he's all excited because he's got Christmas gifts for him. And But when he comes home, he realizes his dad decorates all this tacky Christmas stuff, like really hokey, which guess what? Is awesome. I love it. He's like, I'm doing this for Frederick. And he's like, well, Dad, you are right. I guess that is correct. Uh, and then he gets uh, his gifts out for, for Frederick, but the, he, they shipped the wrong things to Fraser. He was supposed to get this thing called the Living Brain, a chemistry set, a, um, a some other like a microscope. But accidentally, that got sent to Maine, to a Frederick Crane in Maine. And Niles had a good, it just cracked me up. It's, there's nothing brilliant about this joke. It just cracked me up when Niles said, oh, the cranes in Maine have your brain. And it, that, I don't know why, the way he said it, the way he delivered it, like he was being a wise ass, but he kept his voice, his, his like demeanor very straight was, was um, very funny. But he gets all the wrong gifts. And so now it's Christmas Eve. What I also forgot to mention is he's, he's work at a radio station and he's while he is trying to finish his shift, Roz, his uh, producer, goes off. He's there with Mad Dog, who's the sports guy. And there's another guy. I think he's like the artsy fartsy, you know, critic. He's there too. And they're having a big office Christmas party, but but Fraser is trying to give this like long, like this nice holiday Christmas speech about. I think it was about goats or something. Um, but while they're doing that, the party's going on behind him. They bring a stripper in. They try to distract him. That was pretty funny. And then Fraser's like, well, I'm not a robot. He finally kisses the stripper, which, you know, uh, luckily they, it wasn't like there wasn't a bouncer there to beat the crap out of Fraser for doing that. So after he leaves work and, you know, he gets the wrong Christmas gifts, he realizes that he and Niles have to go to the mall. The mall. I thought there was going to be more involved with the mall, but these episodes are only 22 minutes. They go to the mall. They um, they go into the toy store, and the toy store is completely ravaged. You know, there's there's not a ton of stuff there that he wants to get. He wants to get all these smart toys. He sees the living brain, but it's just an empty box. And one of the mothers is like, ooh, let me borrow that. I want to get this to scare my kid into thinking, thinking I'd get him something that nerdy. Then a, a dad comes in with um, gifts from a from a educational store, but it just closed. So Fraser's like, um, you know what? Can I buy them from you? The guy's like, yeah, a thousand bucks. He goes, there's probably not a hundred dollars worth here. He goes, a thousand bucks. I'm trying to cut you a break. He goes, would you take a check? I thought this was pretty clever. He goes, I have three hundred dollars in my pocket in my wallet. I'll give you that, and would you do the rest as a check? He goes, Niles, write him a check. But if you remember, his uh, Niles uh, Maris. Now his wife cut off the check, so the check will bounce. So basically, the guy got three hundred bucks, uh, which I thought was pretty funny. He goes home. At least he has those gifts. But what uh, Martin uh, Fraser's dad said, he goes, "You really should get him this." It was like what was the name of the toy? It was like Robo something Geek, uh, Ultra Robo Geek. You know, it was a an action toy with laser eyes, and and of course those were being sold out like crazy at the store. Fraser comes home. He gets all the gifts he wanted to get. When they go through a decoration box, he finds this box that he got all these gifts from his dad that his dad never used. He's like, well, you know, Fraser, you know, it's, it's, I, I appreciate it, but you always get things for people that you think they'd like instead of things they'd like. And his, you, his dad, uh, Fraser's like, whoa, what have I done? I've done this again. Um, you know, I've ruined Christmas. He goes, here, dad, look, look what I got you. He goes, oh, cool. A robe because it's not a robe. It's like, a, a I forget what he called. It wasn't a smoking jacket or drinking jacket, but it was some kind, some kind of weird jacket. And, um, he's like, oh, that's okay. Frazier. Don't worry about it. I'm hard to buy for. He goes, here, I got you something. I don't know if you'd like it. He opens it up and he starts crying. He goes, dad, it's amazing. And it, he bought the ultra robo geek. So now he can give it to his son because, oh, his son said, that's what I want for Christmas. That's what I asked Santa for. So I'm going to get it. So, of course, the son wants the, the popular toy. The dad bought it for him. 
and we get a little Christmas miracle. Uh, but that that's kind of the whole idea of the episode. We see Frederick for a few seconds. He says to um, he says to um, Niles, he goes, I hope uh, Maris comes out of her coma. I don't know why. I don't think he called her Auntie Maris, but and they look at Niles. He's like, well, I thought the truth would hurt his feelings. Uh, so I would would scare him. So I just I had to tell him something. There was that was kind of funny. Uh, you got the little dog that they've had, and the dog was dressed up as Santa. But at the end, 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 uh, the dog wouldn't walk while dressed as Santa. So the like while the music's playing with oh baby I hear the blue the blue 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 blue, and he takes the um, he finally takes the Santa uh, hat off, and then boom, the dog runs right out. You know, go ready to go for a walk. So all in all, a fun episode where I laughed a few things um, and just Niles and Frazier's kind of repot, repote, is that what it's called? They're just their um, chemistry together is like it was perfectly cast when they did it, perfectly casted cast. Uh, and they, those guys just play off each other really well. Uh, and of course, then there's the whole, you know, opposite when they're with their dad like when they both saw the the way the dad decorated the looks on their faces very fun very fun very funny uh and just a good christmas episode which you know it, i guess the if there's a message it's the um you know to give and you know gives gifts don't give based on what you think uh is a cool gift i mean that could work but but if you know what what people would like, you know, maybe get them something they really like. And that would really go a long way. I think that's the message. I don't know, but you know what the message was, what is for me laughter. And that's what I got out of this episode. I enjoyed it. I laughed. I laughed. And, um, these episodes are all available on Hulu. So if you want to watch Frasier or every episode of Frasier is on Hulu, which is weird because then the new Frasier is on Paramount plus. I never know how these things work. I'd always assume they'd be together, but that's not the case. Um, but I probably will check out the Frasier on Paramount Plus at least one episode. I'm sure it's hokey with a with a laugh track like this is, but this is back from 1995. Again, t- two out of the three days already. I- I've done 1995. I've done one in 1980, one in 1995. Nothing in the 2000s yet. Nothing in the 70s yet. Uh, barely in the 80s. But we're gonna go. We're gonna capture all these decades. Don't you worry. We're only three episodes in, and we have, let me, let me do the math, 25, 24, 23, 22 days left to talk 22 uh, Christmas sitcom episodes, and I've already reached out to, to some, of the, some of the guests to have them on, so looking forward to that, um, and looking forward to another fun week starting tomorrow. Uh, you know, here's the thing. Though I don't know what I'm watching tomorrow. I have a list. I have a list of ideas of, of shows. Um, and I need to look up. I, what I like to do is I look up the Christmas episodes. And I look up what maybe some websites rank as the best Christmas episode. But then sometimes I look at the um, the synopses. Like this wasn't listed as the best on one website. But it had a nice synopsis. I thought that would be fun. I thought it would be more of them in the mall together. It was just them in one store. But all in all, I was happy with my choice. Um, we'll see. We'll see what tomorrow brings. But um, I hope everyone had a nice weekend. We are now 22 days away from Christmas. But you know what that means? We are, okay, I'm going to do this. 20, take away one, take away two, 20 days away from vacation. Okay, so I have the week of Christmas off and I have most of the week uh, the following week, I think I have the first, second, and third off, which is fabulous. Okay, listen, that's a long ways away. Right now, we're just worried about getting ready for Christmas. Twenty-two days away, uh, and I hope I hope to hear from you to, or to you know th- I hope that you tune in again tomorrow. That's what I'm trying to say. You can see I'm doing this one a little differently. The first two episodes, I sat down on my computer on my microphone. Now I'm holding my portable recorder and I'm I'm kind of pacing around the ye old kitchen. Um, but I hope everyone has a wonderful day. If you're watching football today, uh, go Pats, even though they're terrible. Uh, you know, I think I'm rooting for them, for them to win. I don't know. Does it matter anymore? Who knows? I, I think I want them to have a good draft pick. That has nothing to do with Christmas. So I'm going to go now because, as you know, the more I, I talk, the more I talk. 
I could just kind of like it's like a a wheel on a hill. You roll it, and all of a sudden, it just keeps going. And at the bottom, the wheel could be like, "What is? We don't even know what the wheel's talking about anymore." I don't even know where that came from. That doesn't make any sense. So I'm going to leave you now. Listen, thank you so much for listening and subscribing. You can find me on Ready Twitter, Instagram, Instagram, Twitter, Instagram, Threads, and Mastodon Social at Geek Mentality on Blue Sky at Mikey Dash C and uh, at Facebook fans, not experts. That's it. We've done it. Three down, 22 to go. Hope everyone's in the holiday season or hope everyone's in the holiday season. Hope everyone's in the holiday groove, holiday meaning. I don't know. I've done it. I've talked way, but you've probably already gone. So, but, but for the few of you who are still here, cool. Thanks for staying. Thanks for sticking around. And here is my theme song. This is my podcast. I made it. Geek Mentality is what I named it. And I think you should listen and subscribe. Cause I'm kind of funny and awesome. I think that I'm worth your time. And I'm kind of handsome. My mom says, please listen and please subscribe. At least listen to this. Episode. Fast, not experts.